So I've uh, come on, i uh, give you a little update on my new puppy. So he is coming home in just over a week, so it's about 10 days. It'll be Tuesday the 24th, I think it is. Um, so I've decided to call him Dash. Um, and yeah, this is basically is what I've got for him. Um, and I'll go over a little bit about why I've got some of that, why I have, haven't got certain things as well. Now I've got a couple of things that I haven't got with me today um, that are either being delivered sort of in the next few days or I just haven't got them up here at the field with me. So first thing um, which I'll be using pretty much straight away is a collar. So I've got a few different ones for him because um, obviously I didn't quite know what size he's going to be when he first comes home. So I've got this one which is an old sort of cat one that I got someone quite cheap so that's quite uh, good so on all the collars I've got uh, apart from I think two um, which will be for when he's a little bit older they've got these sort of clips um, buckle sort of ones so if you can hear the noise it's all the gazebo where we put up the shade but it's a bit windy today so sorry for the noise um, but yeah I've got them sort of uh, buckle sort of fastenings so I find they're stronger and uh, last a lot better than sort of the plastic clips um, then I've got this one which is kind of neck size up um, and then that one should last us uh, be able to get on him fairly quickly so it's a bit blingier so it won't be his sort of everyday one it will just be sort of his fancy one and probably for when he's slightly older because it is that slightly wider as well and then he's also got this one which used to be woody's um, so again that's quite a big one um, sort of size wise so that'll probably be for when he's older and all of them ones are biophane so they're super easy to um, clean so obviously being a puppy chance that he's going to get filthy at some point go into the mud rain paddling pools all that sort of stuff so obviously i want him about to have fun, explore, but then I can take them off and just wipe them down. They're nice um, and easy just to wipe down quickly and pop back on straight away because they don't have to then dry. They basically dry straight away. Uh, so next thing is harness. So I've got him this one. So obviously he's going to be quite small. So this might not even fit him straight away. I might have to wait a while for him to be able to wear it. But I want it um, for when I bring him home, so I can get him used to wearing it. This is extra small, so it's the smallest one that they uh, do. Um, so hopefully it won't be long until he does grow into it. Um, but this one is what we call Y shape at the front. So his head will come in through here, and his little legs will be sort of here and here. So it's a Y shape going around his chest. I prefer these because it does give them a lot more freedom in their front legs and it does sit nicely on them. It's got a little flea so it's nice and padded and it'll just sit nice on him. Whereas this sort of harness, I know this is huge, it's a customer gave it to me. This sort of one, this strap goes across their chest. So obviously their legs are going to be really restricted with that sort of harness. So if you think if you had a band across your shoulders, you're not going to be able to have full range of movement. Whereas if you had these straps coming across and down, you're going to be able to move your arms a lot better. So if you had the strap across, obviously, uh, think you're not going to be able to move your shoulders and your arms quite as freely as normal. It's the same thing for our dogs. So obviously if there's the band like these uh, Julius Canine ones, which I see a lot of dogs and puppies in, you're going to restrict their shoulders and legs and potentially cause problems. So that is why I don't generally use them. I prefer the Y-shaped ones. So the one I have got, this one, is from Tough Tugs. They're a pretty good brand, but there are plenty of other good brands out there as well. Uh, and then next thing is leads. So I've got a couple of different ones. All of these I had already, because obviously I've got dogs. I do dog walking trainers. I've obviously got leads anyway. So I've got this one, which is a biophane. I believe it's just over a metre, might be one and a half metres, but it's a nice little length just for getting him sort of to and from the fan, 
where I don't really want him to have too much length on the lead but also I don't want really short lead where he is he has no option but to pull so I ideally like this length as the minimum so about one and a half meters minimum for leads then I also have a slightly longer one which is two meters for when I'm doing training so I've got this one so this one I can adjust so it's got a clip there and you can see it's got different uh, clips on it so I can make it shorter if I need to so I can make it right down to about a metre I think it is maybe just over and then right up to the two metres um, for when I'm doing some training so that's uh, I can't remember where I got this one from but place that halty and that just have them if you look at double ended training lead you, uh, plenty will come up but these are good just because you've got that little bit of length so when you're doing things like loose lead training training they've got that little bit of leeway to go wrong and also a bit of recall it's good to have that sort of little bit of freedom and then be able to call them back to you without them bombing off into distance and talk about recall i also have an even longer lead this one so this i won't unravel it but that's I think this one's about six meters so for dash he's uh, jack russell cross that's probably all i need uh, to start off with i have got others which are longer um i think my longest is about 30 meters but obviously he's only going to be a little to start with so i only want my little one so it's nice and uh, light for him to drag so obviously when i if i feel need i need it i can attack i've got two of these ones so i can attach two together so he's got 12 meters um yeah, obviously to start with, I'll be holding this and then doing his recall training and then eventually have it uh, training behind him. So again, this one's bifane, so it drives really quickly. So obviously it means he can go into like the river and uh, to puddles without worrying about it getting soaked. It'll dry nice and quickly. Uh, next thing is treats. So I ordered some of the JR Pate. So I, was, I wasn't able to get the normal 400 gram or 200 gram ones I normally get. They only had 80 grams and 800 grams in stock. So I got beef in the 80 grams. So for Dash, that's probably quite good to have in the 80 grams. Just cut that up and that will last him one or two days of training. But then I did get some of the 800 grams. So that is quite big in duck. Um, so obviously that if i use it i'll just cut it up uh, portion it into uh, smaller bags and then freeze what i'm not using straight away so that's why i really like that because you can cut it up and be prepared and then stick it in the freezer uh, ready for when you do need it so that 800 grams that will probably last them a good couple of weeks if not a bit more so i think that comes to about 9.99 retail also i have a um, trade account so i am able to get it a bit cheaper um because also i get it for my customers and then i just sort of keep a couple of rolls for myself where i need to but yeah i believe their ones are 9.99 then the smaller 8 grams are two pounds 50 around there um but yeah they obviously they do also do 200 grams and 400 grams but i couldn't get hold of them this time i was too slow um, when i updated the website so 800 grams is good enough so at least i'll have too much okay and as i say i can freeze it for when i am ready to use it um now i've got some natural chews and stuff for them as well so i've got some rabbit ears so they're a nice healthy one obviously for dash it'll probably take him quite a while to chew on these but it's just nice for him to sort of have a little nibble on them and um something a bit different for him um obviously he's going to go through teething so i also have some other little toys on the way um for teething i think it's the kong ones they do like a puppy teething one so he's going to have one of them and then i also do have these um it's a bit dirty because i use it quite a lot with other dogs but he's got that one which fills up some treats to keep him entertained um and then i have this which is lucillin so it's good for any like cuts and things like that so if he goes into the bushes or does playing with another dog and he gets a little scratch spray this on and it will help just heal it up so 
that's a really good one. I always have um, at least one bottle of that. I try and have one bottle in the van, one bottle at home. Um, but yeah, it's really good. It's antiseptic. Um, it won't like irritate them or anything. Obviously, they might freak out a little bit putting it on, but it's a really good one just to help um, if they get a cut, anything like that. Um, the other things that I have that I haven't got with me, um, I've got an ID tag. So dogs do need ID tags legally when they're out and about. So he has got one of them on the way. And then I'll just attach that to the collar or harness, whichever I'm using. Um, I also have um, a little buggy. So um, when he first comes home, he can't go on the ground because of not having his injections. I'll pop him in his buggy and he'll have his walks and that so he can get some enrichment, get used to seeing people, different dogs, but safely in his crate without risking catching any sort of uh, illnesses, diseases, anything like that. Um, so that's pretty much what I've got him. I already have a big basket full of toys, so he'll have free reign of, well, he won't have free reign of that, but he'll be able to have a couple of toys out of that at a time um, to play. The reason I don't let them have free reign, I just don't want them to become too reliant on picking and choosing what they want. So I normally just have a few toys out at a time and then they can play with them toys and then every few days I'll just rotate the toys and I find that uh, makes them not so bored of the toys either so if they're only getting it for a few days at a time they're then really excited about the toys they do have out then a few days later they get taken away uh, some other new ones they haven't seen for a while come out so Buzz, he'd, my collie, he does have his favourite toys uh, with one of them he does generally have out all the time because it is his ultimate toy and his favourite so he is allowed that all the time and Dash will be the same if he has a toy he really loves I'll let him have that all the time and then swap his other ones around um, as we go um, so I won't be getting any puppy pads um, because I find it's an unnecessary step in the toilet training um, so when they're doing toilet training obviously what end goal is for them to go to the toilet outside if we're training them to go on the puppy pad, we're inadvertently training them to toilet inside. Because even though, yes, we are teaching them to go on the pad, they are still being rewarded and told it's okay to go to toilet inside. So I just scrap that step altogether and I just go straight out to toilet in outside. So it is okay for puppies to go outside in the garden and in their safe space because um, we know other dogs haven't been in there that aren't vaccinated and have these potentially um, harmful diseases and illnesses that they could pass on to a puppy because obviously I have Buzz but I know he hasn't got anything that could be passed on to the puppy so I know going outside is going to be nice and safe for him and obviously I'm not going to take him out on long walks um, where he's going on the ground and potentially pick up anything so he will literally be going outside on the ground just to toilet and then come back in other times when he's outside I'll either be carrying him or he'll be in his buggy so he uh, the chances of him picking up anything that he shouldn't be is very low but by me carrying him and going in his buggy means he is exposed to some things um, but not let's say the more harmful ones but that it will help strengthen his immune system as he goes just like kids it's good for them to have the old cold and that sort of thing as they go obviously it just builds up their immune system a little bit for if they do get something a bit more serious hopefully having that immune system built up by the sort of less risky stuff will really help fight the more serious stuff off um so the other thing is a crate so i will have one in my bedroom um for night time then one in the living room um, as well for nap times in the living room so the crate isn't just for a night um, I do get them to go in it during the day especially as puppies just because they don't know how to regulate sleep so I encourage them to go in there during the day and I'll shut the door so yeah sort of enforced rest time and sleep because puppies do need sort of 18 to 20 hours of rest and sleep each day to be able to grow and develop properly 
so that's why I'm going to have the two crates, one in the bedroom, one in the living room, so he gets used to going in um, during the day and he doesn't kick up a fuss, he can have that rest and especially because I have Buzz as well, he's likely going to want to play with Buzz the whole time if he's not in there. And it also means that I can go off and do, make my dinner without having to worry about watching him the whole time um, whilst I'm cooking or whilst I'm like having a shower, anything like that, where I can't give him the attention to make sure he isn't getting up to no good. I can pop him in his crate, give him a little Kong with some treats in, um, keep him entertained and then hopefully he'll then nap as well after that whilst I finish up whatever I'm doing. And it also helps with um, avoiding separation anxiety. So if they're going in there on their own and you're just sort of potting around doing odd jobs, it means they're less likely to stress out from being away from you. So that's pretty much everything that I've got and a few bits that I won't be getting for him. So if you've got any questions, put them down below and I'll um, answer or I can um, do another video on it, uh, depending on how in depth I need to go. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much everything I've got for him, uh, preparing for him to come home. Um, got, as I say, any questions, just send them over. Oh, well, as I say, we're getting him very soon. So send me um, any questions or topics you would like me to cover when he does come home. Um, so I will be trying to document his uh, toilet training, crate training, all them sort of stuff, things. So I can then upload it and help everyone on here as well. Um, but yeah, I'll try and be documenting as much of his journey as possible. So anyone that's getting a puppy or sort of going, think of getting a puppy, you can kind of see what's involved in the journey. So I will try and post another video maybe next week before he comes home with like the setup that I've done with like his crate and all that sort of stuff, and how I've been getting Buzz ready. So if you've got an older dog and getting a puppy, that'll probably be useful for you. Um, but yeah, if not, I'll see you on the next one.